Don't worry, guys. My regular programming will be back. What's going on? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Rex. In this video, we'll be doing a multi product showcase. If you haven't seen my last video, I made a product showcase video for one of my cars. You see, I'm listing a bunch of my cars for sale, and I asked you guys if I should make some videos on it. And some of you said yes. And the last video I did went reasonably well. The car is now sold, so I'm here to make another video. But this time, instead of showcasing one vehicle, I'm going to showcase a few of them. Without further ado, let's get into it. Wait, one more thing. I may miss some details on each car I show. For more details, you can email me or check out the eBay listings. If you don't see any eBay listings below, the products are either sold or I haven't listed them yet. All right, let's get to it. So first off, we have a Tamiya TT-02, and this was purchased as an original RSR Porsche 911 chassis kit. And the purpose of buying this kit was to make a winter rally car, although I never actually got around to doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the body. It is a body from the factory, but I have enlarged the wheel wells to accommodate for the larger Overland Safari wheels. It is in the standard wheelbase, not the short wheelbase that this normally asks you to do. Because I've enlarged these wheel wells, we don't need the short wheelbase. The roll cage is made of straws, and you can see the paint has started flaking off the plastic portions. It's actually a mix of paper straws and plastic straws. The body's also been reinforced. You'll see black marks here. That's not a big deal because it's all been reinforced here with shoe goo. So black marks are just the tires rubbing off on the shoe goo that's there. I have made my own light buckets and there's currently tape covering the holes, but you can put LEDs in here. We have mud flaps, as you can see, with one sixteenth inch thick rubber sheet that I made attached with shoe goo and they're very strong. The body definitely has seen better days. In terms of life left, it's got lots because there are no cracks or anything like that. It's only scratches and some paint is flaking off, flaked off at the bottom here. Otherwise, the uh, body is in very good sturdy condition it's a runner that's for sure unless you but i also like displaying some of my cars with a bit of real dirt and scuffs and things like that anyway so in case you're into that if you're not a new body can be found easily moving on to the chassis the chassis has been driven not as much as uh, many of my other cars i'm gonna say a handful of times yeah i've got a few tto2s so i'm not sure if this was one wait yeah there we go so it has been driven i mean this happens after a about two or three times driving it anyway. It's in fairly good condition. I have taken it apart and cleaned it before. I haven't yet for the, since the last run. I've installed oil-filled suspension on the front and rear. We have custom-made shock towers so that I could fit the larger shocks and have more range of movement and higher ground clearance. Same with the rear, taller shock towers. And the custom shock towers are bolted directly into existing holes on the stock shock towers. So they can be removed and you can use a stock shock tower if you'd like. Let's get these out of the way for a second. These are fenders that I've made. It's really cool because I've made it so you match it up in here. And the fenders, inner wheel fenders, actually sit on the mud flap here. So it creates an actual inner wheel well. I'll show you real quick. All right. So if we look underneath, the inner wheel fenders that I've made match up with these mud flaps and create a liner if you don't like them or you need to do maintenance you can remove them swing them aside or you can take off the body clips and completely remove them i've used two-sided tape to put these pieces of lexan here to further prevent debris from going into the chassis this way and to also support the mounting of the fender of the liner And the rear as well, it's mounted like this. Once you put the body on, it's in its perfect position. Body squishes it down just enough and sits like that. And you're preventing some debris from going in there. Also makes it look a lot more solid when you're looking into the car or from the side of the car or underneath the car. Again, this can also be removed if you don't like it or want it. This driver head is not only taped kind of in position, but underneath there, there is a lot of glue, shoe goo and hot glue. So this head isn't really going anywhere. I fitted a standard 540 Mabuchi 27 turn with a fairly large pinion. I don't remember which pinion gear is in here. The only thing missing will be a radio system and batteries. There's low friction kingpin balls in here. And here, the entire car was built with rubber sealed bearings. The rear has metal out drives, metal drive shafts, and metal wheel studs. It's actually using wider wheel studs than standard. It's a TG10 wheel studs. 
in order to fill out and create the correct offset for the width of the rear. Next we have a TT01E. This is the racing Euro truck. I'm sure you know what you're looking at. Don't mind the front wheels, they've been glued to prevent flex on high grip carpet track, to prevent rollover. I've got a couple of videos of this thing on my channel running really well on the carpet track, I think twice. It was built with full rubber sealed ball bearings. Oh yeah, and this thing comes off with Velcro. Here it is, built to stock spec for stock racing. Completely stock. Run only on carpet, never on road. Nothing's broken. It's mint condition. So anybody looking for a very inexpensive Euro truck beater, I've got it right here. Next up is this Lancia DF03RA. The body itself has seen better days. I actually used this as a runner. My purpose was to run the heck out of it, get it covered in dirt, and put it on display like many of my other RC cars, rally cars. But I've chosen to use another body now, and this body is free to go back on its original chassis. Although the body may be used, it's got cool mud flaps, the chassis is brand new. The chassis itself is brand new and has never been run. Completely brand new DF03RA. Uh, built with rubber sealed ball bearings and upgraded center shaft, factory oil shocks, factory ball diff. This thing's gorgeous, beautiful. This specific one was uh, never run, built for shelf. But it's time to let it go to a good home or somebody who really needs parts. This is a mint condition built DF03RA. If you don't know what this is, this is a legendary rally ready car. Because it's based off of a buggy, it's got quite long arms and really nice long stroke suspension. And look at this thing. Look at the look at the articulation. This is an awesome rally car that Tamiya developed uh, out of their buggy. Works really well in loose surfaces. It's very well balanced. Battery sits in the middle. Motor sits right here, mid-rear, giving lots of traction to the rear end on loose surfaces. Comes with these wheels and hard rubber rally tires that I have used. Um, but they just sat on display after. This is a TLO one with all the goodies. Before we get to that, this is Evo 7 rally body. Not original. But it is a Tamiya body that I painted up and put on this chassis. You're also getting an awesome rally cockpit set. I spent some time painting these guys up. I'm not very good at painting though. Hard plastic wing, hard plastic vent. The body, I mean the rally cockpit does come out. It's held in with Velcro. Comes with these wheels and these HPI Pirelli rally tires. On a gray lightweight chassis, if you don't know anything about TLO1s, this is a Fairly well-known chassis. The standard chassis is usually black, but this one's gray. It's known as the lightweight version. Other upgrades to this are the sway bars in the front, stainless hinge pins everywhere, adjustable links all around. Inside the transmission is a high-speed gear set, and right here is the carbon lightweight center drive shaft. If you're a TL1 fan, you know that these parts are rare. Well, I have a put together car here. It has been run outside. I did run it outside. I got video of it. Still has lots of life in it. I even brought it to a carpet track and it did incredibly well. But it's time to move it on. Be aware it has a locked front diff, creating a spool effect for the carpet track running. Also seems to work out quite well on the asphalt as well. And here is another TL01. Not original. This body was supposed to come originally on a TT01, but that TT01 is long gone. I've since placed this body, used body, but still in very nice condition. A couple of cracks in the rear bumper. The mirror is gone. Some scuffs here and there. It's now on a TL01 display chassis, I think I used it on. 
I don't know how good this chassis is. No, I did run this. Yeah, I ran this when I first got it, and then it became a display chassis. I had the intention of rebuilding and restoring. It doesn't seem like much is wrong with it. It's even got the adjustable front links. Old 540 Mabuchi with a black end. Standard stock TL1 chassis with modern Pogo shocks. Ready to go. Both diffs are open, and that's it. There's just a display chassis. I mean, you could run it if you want. I did run it. Or if you need one for parts, or if you just want to have one again, or see what it's like, it comes with this Citroen Rally body. All right, and that wraps up all of the cars I want to showcase in this video. And there are more vehicles I need to list. I may make another video of those or just throw them up onto the eBay. For now, if I don't have the eBay listings below, it's because I'm giving everyone a chance to contact me in case you want to deal with this privately or the products are sold. If you do see the eBay links below, don't be shy to check them out. As always, thanks for your support. Make it a great day and peace out.